Wild here, welcome to another Lonely Turret 2 devlog. I decided after posting the last devlog that I shouldn't be sticking to a schedule for these, so this one's much later for some of you than you probably expected. One of the greatest weaknesses of doing game development in your free time is that when you don't have free time, uh, you're kind of screwed. After I've been piled with homework and projects, I knew I had to call it for a while. I had the script written out for two weeks, but I'm rewriting the start of it because it was all about me trying to make time for it and how I was being lazy with some things, but that's just not the case now that I look back at it. I'm doing this video on a bit of a time crunch. I have a two day break until my last final and then my two week summer break where I'll be away from my PC for, well, two weeks. I didn't want to get to the point where it's been almost two months without a devlog, so I'm taking what free time I have right now and seeing what I can do. First up, bugs. Let's look at the ones I fixed. There was a bug with the boss bar in level 2 where it wasn't properly changing colors to match the level. This was fixed, and the same thing is happening on level 3, so I'm glad I had it fixed. There's also some weird stuff happening with a few weapons, so I had a few alterations done, such as the twister and black hole no longer affecting bosses, so you can no longer cheese them. Another issue with the bosses came with when I was testing to see how far I can make it with the new changes to make the game easier, and when I got to a high enough kill count, the enemies were coming out so fast that I was getting multiple bosses on the screen, so I made a big change. Now, whenever you're in a boss fight, the kill count freezes. No matter how many enemies you kill, until that boss is dead, it's not going anywhere. That kill count will stay still, you won't get any upgrades, so it also means that you can't cheese bosses through health-based upgrades, and it's much more of a challenge now. Last video, I talked about how the game was too hard. I found that issue a bit tedious to solve, but I think I've done it. Possibly even a little too good. I nerfed a bunch of the enemies to make them easier to kill. For example, a level 2 rounder used to take exactly two generic bullets to kill it, but now it only needs one and a half. While this isn't too good, it adds up over time. For example, now the level 3 rounder can be killed with exactly 2 bullets rather than exactly 3. Some of the higher level darts don't go nearly as fast, and the damage enemies deal has been decreased all around the board. On top of that, you might have noticed while watching another change I made, the turret health. The turret health used to start at 25, upgrade in intervals of 5, and heal at intervals of 10. As of right now, I've changed it to 32, 8, and 12 respectively, though I think this change might be overkill, and we'll likely either revert it or find some middle ground. Let me know what you think about this. Before we get into level 3, I'd like to say, if you made it this far into the devlog and want to see more, you should leave a like and maybe even subscribe, because not only will it help you find the next devlog when it releases, but it also helps by recommending videos to other people. With that out of the way, let's look at level 3. While level 2 had a focus on enemies that shot back at you, and you had to make use of stuff like fog and gatlers to deal with incoming fire, level 3 has a focus of unusual enemy patterns, requiring the player to make use of attachments that will home or deal damage without the delay of bullet speed, like lasers, which I will cover in a bit. In terms of enemies, the dart and rounder return. The swarmer also returns, but it isn't nearly as common as it was in the first level. For new enemies, though, just like level 2, there are three new enemies, one of which is a boss. There's the torpedo, the bolt, and the new boss, the trickster. The torpedo is a new enemy that spirals in towards the player, kind of like how a boss does. These appear immediately at the first wave of level 3, and are quite common. They're faster than rounders to make up for the longer distance they have to travel, and when they get close enough to the player, they'll just home in straight to the player, because otherwise it makes them way too easy to hit. Pretty much they go through every single attachment. Different levels have less of an angle to them, making their path smaller. This means as you get higher, they spiral in a little bit closer, so you have less time to deal with them. Next up, let's look at the Bolt. The Bolt is another new enemy. Unlike most enemies that always move towards the player, the Bolt is way more random. Every now and then it will change its target position, but the position will always be closer to the turret where it currently is. So despite moving randomly, it will always be approaching slowly. These are much easier to aim at than the Torpedo, and they aren't too much stronger than a Rounder. Last comes the Trickster. 
Just like the fleet had trick up its sleeve, the trickster has tricks of its own. Oh, that's that's quite the tongue twister. The trickster had tricks of its. Uh, actually, it's it's not too hard, but I'm I'm not going to do it again. It can randomly change directions. Bosses are already hard to hit because they tend to stick to the outer radius of the level while moving around. But having a chance to change directions when it spawns in more enemies makes it much harder to predict its location when aiming. It's also tankier than other bosses. This is because the level gives you attachments that do a much better job of hitting these bosses. Speaking of attachments, let's go over level 3's attachment pool. Just like the last two levels, wild cards are added to the pool at 250, 750, and 1000. From the start, you'll have access to the Gunner, Orbiter, Homer, Blaster, Firework, and a brand new attachment, the Laser. The Laser is a new type of weapon for level 3, and there's quite a few variants on it we'll cover as we go. The Laser shoots out an instantaneous laser beam every second that deals DPS for anything in it, but will despawn in half a second. It deals the same DPS that a generic fog does. This instant laser is great for quickly dealing damage to faraway enemies without giving bosses, torpedoes, or bolts any time to move away. It's very good at aiming, pretty much. I won't be going into detail for all of the attachments here though, because we have another devilogue dedicated to the first 31 attachments. This one's just going to be focusing on the new ones. When you get to 250, the Ninja, Orbital, Gatler, Rocketeer, and the new Summoner and Boomerang are added to the pool. The Summoner is a completely new kind of attachment, and it summons bears to fight for you. The bears have the same stats as rounders, and the level of the bear goes up with every upgrade. Instead of having a set cooldown, a new bear will spawn one second after its last one dies or goes off screen. <laughs> the Boomerang, on the other hand, is another new shooting attachment. This attachment shoots out boomerangs every second that return to the turret. These are great for enemies like torpedoes and bosses once they get closer to you, because they have two chances to hit an enemy that it otherwise might miss. The boomerangs are twice as fast as generic bullets when they start, but they slow down as they go, eventually returning to you. Their damage is the same as generic bullets though. Next up at 500 are the Seekers, Engineer, Fumigator, Hurricane, and the Charger. The new weapons here are the Hurricane and the Charger, which are variants of the Firework and Laser. The Hurricane is pretty much like a Firework, and is from the original game. Unlike the normal Firework, the mini bullets here will orbit. This is extremely good for creating a storm of bullets the enemies have a hard time getting through. There's also the Charger. The Charger is a laser that can be stronger than the normal laser if used properly. The size and damage of the charger's laser beam depend on how much it gets charged by spinning. The faster and more you spin between shots, the better the beam. It gets bigger, it deals more damage, etc. Similar to the ninja, the charger also works great with rotation speed upgrades. Next up at 750, the attachments added to the pool are the Billy, Orbitrix Fan, and the Railgun. The Railgun is essentially a more powerful laser. Similar to how the gunner has the cannon, the railgun shoots larger beams that deal more damage at the cost of a longer cooldown. The fan, on the other hand, is a much simpler upgrade you probably won't use in a normal run that will rotate the turret clockwise for you, but while it does make you faster clockwise, it makes you slower when you try to rotate the other way, so this isn't for every build. Lastly, at 1000, you unlock the triot fogger, smokers, and the prism. You probably recognize the first two, but the Prism's a new weapon, and practically just a dual-headed laser. Fun fact, this is the first dual-headed weapon that needed its own class, as the laser does some specific things for creating the beams that require different things that the typical bullet to function. Okay, and that's level 3. I have no idea what I'm going to do to edit this video, but let's hope I get it out before I have to leave. As of right now, the game's probably around 75% complete, and once all the enemies, waves, and attachments are finished for level 4, level 5 should be relatively quick to add because it's a lot of the same. Overall, I'm really happy with how the game is coming together. I'm currently working on getting a Steam page set up for Lonely Turret 2, and hopefully I'll have a page by the next video, so those of you who are interested can wishlist it. But it's quite a process to work through. Once the fifth level is finished, I'll be sending it out to friends for testing, 
since I need to make sure the game is well balanced and bug free before I send it out on Steam. I hope you guys are excited as I am, and if you want to see the next video, make sure you subscribe and leave a like so that it'll get recommended to you. Since I'm no longer doing these devlogs on a schedule, it's really helpful. Until then, take care. This is Wild Games, signing off.